Hey guys, another episode of Ask Vanguard Tactics. So I'm your host, Stephen Box, and we should normally have Mark, but unfortunately Mark is currently trapped in the snow. So um, what I'm going to do to begin with, um, I'm going to just kick off with all of the questions that we've got um, through our Patreon page. And obviously, as you guys um, come on and watch, if you guys got a question, just make sure you hit the, um, you can put that in the comment section and we'll make sure to get back to you. But obviously I've got, um, you know, I asked in our Patreon community group earlier you know what questions did you have so I'll go through those now and um, yeah we'll kick off proceedings and then hopefully Mark will join us ever so soon but basically myself and Mark entered in a uh, 1750 point ITC event called War in the Warp um, it was a two-day event with over um, five games and myself and Mark when he gets to hit when he's basically back from uh, gets home from being stuck in the snow me and him are going to go over some of the armies that we played how we got on and ultimately um, the overall experience what we did well what didn't um, and also where we finished so uh, we'll also cover the list that we took the list that we played so guys if you've got any questions um, if you've just joined um, you know comment below um, I want to know where you're from be really good to find out where you guys are uh, listening in from, watching in, and also whereabouts you um, found Vanguard Tactics. Because all I want to do is get to know you guys a lot better, and then what I'll do is kick off with the um, basically the questions that I've got through the Patreon stream. So I'm, if I'm looking at two screens, that's why I've got Patreon over here, and I've got uh, you guys right in front of me. So um, yeah, apologies if I do sort of look to the left or the right. But if somebody please could just leave a comment, whatever it is, a hello, something like that, that'd be fantastic, because then I can check that um, the messaging screen pops up. So if someone could just pop in the comments, that would be absolutely fantastic and really help me out. Let's see if we've got. I heard a uh, oh, click to view comments. There we go. Yes, we've got someone from SoCal in the USA. That is incredible. Um, I California uh, guys, can you hear me? Okay. If not, um, please do let me know. Uh, we've got Jacksonville. Dean from Essex, amazing. We've got um, Peterborough. Getting. Thomas is getting ready for the LVO. That's incredible, mate. Absolutely incredible. Um, love to know how you're uh, getting on there and what, what you're painting, what you what list you're taking there. We've got Hertfordshire. Um, sound is good. Okay. So um, basically, we've got Chris as well. So Chris actually, um, Chris Smalley, um, has just purchased uh, and was our first purchaser of our list tailoring package that we have available so I've just written Chris a very very spicy Eldar list he wanted something extremely fast quick I'm not going to discuss it too much but I'm looking forward to having a Skype call um, with Chris and we're going to go over some of the tactics that we've that I've sort of thought about and how um, he can essentially dominate with this 1750 um, it is a mix of Eldari so there are some really cool spicy stuff there um, Thomas says he is playing his um finishing off his orcs incredible um dean said were the new um bolter rules on play yes they were and i definitely um i've got mixed feelings about the bolter rule actually so uh, we'll go on to that i think it's but all in all really positive feelings uh, but i don't think it is as um, brutal as people think. I think it is a nice little change. Uh, Chris said he's just spraying the three ravagers as we speak. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how you paint your solitaire, by the way. There's another uh, um, one there. And do you know what, um, Chris? I think you're going to really, really enjoy the new video. I've just edited our new video, and it is the Harlequins versus the Space Wolves. It's me versus Mark in a two... Um, 2000 point ITC showdown um, of two soup lists. So he's running the Space Wolves and I'm running the Harlequins. Uh, so he's got some other bits and bobs thrown in, but literally I am about 40% uploaded so far and 
I can't wait for it to drop because this is our best battle report yet. Um, we've really took a lot more time and we've listened to your guys' feedback. We, I've added in new features. Um, we've got some like time lapses. You can see how we deployed. Um, we talk you through the deployment a little bit better. I've got some nice little cut scenes. Um, and I can't like literally editing that video took me well over 12 hours. So, um, I, you know, anyone who's commented, we, we are listening um, and we just want to make these videos as, as, you know, as professional as we possibly can for you, obviously, while still trying to do my day job. So, um, yeah, do, you know, let me know. Um, and if you like the video, please obviously hit like, subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Share it with your network. It really helps me out. So I can't believe we actually have 23 people um, watching already. This is incredible, guys. So um, I'd also love to know, actually... Um, how did you hear about Vanguard Tactics? Did someone share it with you? Uh, did you just kind of stumble across us? Um, how did you hear about it? Because again, it just helps me then, um, you know, like with the marketing side of things to get more people out there. Um, and if you obviously you do like these Ask VTs, give us a like um, because it helps um, other people that are in, in the community. Uh, it basically tells YouTube, um, hey guys, if you're into Warhammer, this is the video you should go and watch. So the more likes you can give this video, guys, I would really, really appreciate it. So, um, yeah. So what we've got here, um, I've got loads of Patreon questions. I've got guys coming in here. So we've got um, David can uh, hear us now. Um, excited for the video by watching D6 Evolution. Yeah, had a great um, you know show with those guys. Um, got some as well. The other thing is as well myself. And Jack and Dan, who you've seen on the channel, if you've been watching the battle reports, are going up to um, play in a team event, an, IT, an ETC team event this weekend. So we are going to be going and um, competing there against the uh, guys in some, there's some England teams there. There's the Glasshammer guys that obviously I'm sponsored by, uh, but I'm not playing for their team. I'm playing for Vanguard Tactics. Um, so there's some amazing teams, um, three man event. Uh, so we'll, myself, Dan and Jack will be doing another one of these next week to report back on how that small team event went. To be honest, I think we're going to get absolutely smashed. Um, we've took three well-rounded lists, uh, very balanced, but the other team events are like extreme lists. Like there's a lot of... Um, just the most disgusting, brutal list you've ever seen. Um, and literally, when you fight, when you see these lists, you'll be like, oh my god, I can't believe people actually take that. But they do, um, and that is a team extreme event. So um, it'll be really cool. Uh, we'll just get absolutely smashed. And um, yeah, but it'll be great to sort of see that. Um, saw your video through YouTube recommended videos. Um, I think it was Lawrence via Tabletop Tactics that I found you. Can't quite remember though. Cool. Um, uh, Lawrence from Tabletop Tactics is an absolute um, top gentleman and, um, you know, has become a fantastic sort of a friend over the last couple of years as well. So hopefully myself and Lawrence will do a little bit more together over time as well. So that's cool. Uh, people searching for battle reps. I found you because I wanted to know who defeated Lawrence from Tabletop Tactics. Yeah, um, it was an absolutely brilliant game, but a great matchup for me. Um, and I kind of know all of Lawrence's tricks from, you know, being a Dark Eldar player myself. So I kind of knew everything that his army did um, and I was able to play around it. So that's just one of the things that I think I kind of had that upper hand in that match just because I, um, I suppose, knew exactly everything that he did because I'm so used to playing the Dakari and also against it as well. Because obviously I play against Mark all the time and he's always running Talos. So um I know, and, and that's one of the beauties of um, just playing and playing and playing the game. You learn so much about all these other things. So, um, I'm going to go through these Patreon questions. Um, apologies, guys, if you've asked. Um, I am going to get to everyone's questions who've asked a question here as well. Look, I'm here all night, so I've got... I've got nothing better else to do. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get through everyone's questions and uh, this show will be as long as it needs to be, basically. So, guys, I hope you're enjoying this anyway. Um, obviously, make sure you do give us a like um, when you can um, because it just helps more people find us. And all we want to do is basically build the best community we possibly can um, and just help people become a better 40k gamer. You know, we make mistakes. I make mistakes. I made loads at the weekend um, and I look back and go, why on earth did I do that for? Um, but, look, the more we talk about this stuff, um, the more critical and analytic you can be. And in my background as a, um, you know, so I competed in bodybuilding for, and I still do now. Um, I have took a bit of a break 
of bodybuilding and I'm going to be getting back on stage this year. Um, so I've got some pretty big goals this year. I want to try and make the England ETC team if possible and also I want to compete in another bodybuilding show. And I tell you what, um, bodybuilding teaches you um, one thing and essentially that is to be extremely patient and also very critical and open-minded and it gives you a work ethic to try and try and try and when you fail you go back and you do more and you do more and I'm taking that element um, everything I've learned from the sport of bodybuilding and I'm going to put it into Vanguard Tactics to, be to help me become a better gamer okay so um, yeah we've got another question here uh, from Lee um, sorry if this has already been answered but are you planning to showcase a new list based on your on Beta uh, Bolter rules. That was a mouthful. Beta Bolter rules. Um, so yes, um, my new list I'm going to be putting in Patreon. Um, so all the lists now are going to go straight there. Um, in a, and I'll be you know completely honest with you guys. You know we are getting hundreds of comments on every single video, and we're doing our best to reply to absolutely everybody. Um, I think I'm probably getting about twenty to thirty emails a day at the moment, um, and it is absolutely crazy to um you know to, to obviously try and reply to everyone but we're going to do our best however that's why we've got the patreon so um you know even for a dollar um a dollar a month we've got that community uh, so if you want to support the channel um you just need to search for vanguard tactics over on there and we've got three different tiers so the first one essentially you get all the lists you get the night cheat sheet and i've revamped that by the way so if you've downloaded the night cheat sheet We've got a new, uh, much better version of that uh, cheat sheet basically over on the Patreon. It's got a new Vanguard Tactics uh, branding on it and everything like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then all of the lists that we've um, running are going to be put through there. And then if you subscribe for $5 a month, you just get a little bit more content from us. We're going to start to, um, obviously, the next chapter of the 40k Players Guide is due to drop on the 7th of February. Um, so... Um, it might actually go out on the tenth, to be fair. So, the, those guys on that uh, five dollar um, Patreon will get the access to the next chapter, which is going to be all about deployment. Obviously, chapter one was how to screen, and then chapter two is going to be deployment in a little bit more detail. So that's going to be hitting there. And then also at the end of February, we're going to be releasing for those Patreon subscribers two tactical videos a month. So essentially, it is going to be like we're going to pick the real minutia and obviously I commentate on some of this stuff throughout the 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 event uh, sorry the games and battle analysis is but I'm going to teach you um, exactly like what you need to do to like wrap a unit so if you're playing like Harlequins for example um, you need to be so good at wrapping a unit and knowing what weapon you can attack with because um, you know you can do some really cool stuff with consolidating because sometimes when you go into combat with a unit you don't actually want to kill it you just want to charge um, and then you want to bubble wrap them as best as you possibly can but without actually killing them and you can then make sure you maneuver your units in the right position and choose to attack with the right weapons so that you don't actually kill your opponent and then that can be amazing so then you can kill your opponent in their turn um, in their phase and then as soon as you obviously killed them in their turn they can't interact anymore and then it's your turn you're moving you're charging you're killing and that's when you can really sort of break the camel's back so to speak um, and they also can't shoot you so it's a win-win so I'm going to be showing you some really cool um, little like five ten minute videos like that and they're going to be put on that Patreon tier and then we finally got a third uh, third tier there where um, it's basically going to be our inner circle so there's only 15 spaces and only 14 left now um, our top guy Ian has already signed up for that and he's going to be getting basically every single um, like month you unlock something new so one of them is like a Skype call with me so um, you know what we'll do is we'll sit down 30 minutes we'll go over what your army is um, you know and we'll talk about some tactics you know in you know essentially you might want to report back to me and I'll say okay cool um, you know, what if you play this? What would you do? What secondaries would you choose if you're taking, um, for example, if you're playing in the ITC or how are you going to deploy? What went well? What went wrong? Um, I then do another one, which is like a list review. So um, you send me your list. I'll send you a video back explaining about what I would change. Um, another one is, for example, so every time you're with us, 
you're going to get a different thing. Ian's actually watching Black Shield, um, the Black Shield Inner Circle. Ian, we're currently working on your Imperial list at the moment, um, so that should be with you within the week. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to getting that over to you. Um, and then another one, we've got another month you get. So you, we got the list review, you get a tailored list. That's what we're doing for Ian at the moment. Um, we're also going to be trying to... Um, run and we are going to run this a master class so what's going to happen is we're going to get all those people on an inner circle in one room at one time and it's going to be a two-day event hopefully one or two-day event depending on um in the uh, situation that's yet to be decided but i want to try and get two days if possible and essentially what we're going to do is get everybody all those people in an inner circle playing games but myself and the other guys from vanguard tactics and be going around the room coaching you how to play so it's not going to be like a really competitive tournament it's going to be all about basically becoming a better player and you know let's say you make a really bad mistake and we realize it turn two is game over look let's take it back a few phases and rerun it from there and then that way Everyone is going to learn so much more. You'll play loads of different armies, loads of different people, go through loads of tactics. Um, Mark as well is going to paint you a model, um, a HQ model to a good tabletop standard. That's another month. So there's loads of cool things. Every month you're with us, you're going to get unlock that. So if you'd like to join the Inner Circle, and then also we're going to create a Facebook group for those people in the Inner Circle, and you'll be able to you know, chat to myself, Mark, um, down in jacket any time. Um, there's, it's all this cool stuff to come, and obviously we've got the stash over here. Um, so we've got hoodies, t-shirts, we've got sweatpants that I'm wearing, so um, vest tops, whatever. Um, so we're going to be trying getting you guys some of that as well. Um, so we've got loads of cool stuff planned. So anyway, let me crack on with Patreon. Um, Dean said we need some Vanguard Tactics dice. We do, and do you know what? I will look into getting that done. But I tell you what, getting custom branded dice is really quite costly. So um, I'll, the thing is, I'd probably put them on there and be like, oh, I'm not paying that much. So, um, But it is so expensive to, unfortunately, do dice. Um, but we're thinking about doing some counters for objective markets and all kind of stuff. So if you guys get any ideas, what you'd like from us, pop in the comments section. I'd love to know more. So anyway, oh, let me uh, chill out a little bit, slow down the pace and get some of these Patreon questions answered. Uh, right. Okay, so we've had a question from Luke. This may be stupid and basic. There's never a stupid question, um, Luke. Uh, Death Watch in close combat. Do we want to force combat... Um, or is it our shooting so good that you want to prioritize that? What is the general rule? Would it be good to charge versus continue to shoot? As well as um, that, super keen to see your pure Death Watch list, if possible to share your work in progress. Okay, so Ian, dice tray, love it. I'm working on that one for our battleground. So um, yeah, we've got... Okay, so essentially then... Close combat and Death Watch, you want them, you want everything, right? Death Watch are so good at everything. You want them doing absolutely everything. So what we want to be doing is we want to be dropping in, um, you know, for example, nine inches away, opening fire, um, and then what you need to do is get into combat, start wrapping units up, because at that point, um, because you get so many attacks with the close combat weapons, as long as you have your Vanguard veteran in there, it doesn't matter, okay? So, um, and obviously, as long as you're not walking into a fight that you're going to lose, and you're going to lose loads of models, sometimes it is better. Let's say you're playing orcs, you know, um, if they've got 30 orcs, you're not going to kill 30 with, you know, 10 Death Watch boys. So um, you might take out 10, for example, or 15, but you're also going to get hit back pretty hard. So it might be better off, stay back, use the stratagem, and then overwatch them to death. So, um, yeah, it, it really depends on who you're going up against. Like I went into Magnus because he had two wounds left, and I know I can chip those off. So, um, yeah, it really does depend who you're fighting, basically. But if you think, actually, I've got a pretty decent chance of going through these boys, then get your Death Watch into combat because they are fantastic. So Justin said, I'm over in the States, so I'd like to see the live show. A couple of questions. We learn so much from our mistakes um, than from our successes. What are some of the game mistakes you guys have made recently? Um, one, so actually, um, you'll see in this next, this is from Justin, so I go over my mistakes in this next battle report that's about to drop, Harlequins versus Space Wolves. 
Um, and one of them was just not understanding my secondaries and not keeping them in the forefront of my mind. Huge mistake. And also the other one was that I've made recently and I sort of spoke about in there was that I haven't used the Incarn because I, oh, cat's out the bag now, but I was using the Incarn. And um, again, like, you could just tell that I was out of practice. So um, again, just not practicing with the list enough before you go into a competitive match. Um, yeah, so that is literally it. Um, and on the Death Watch front, what are your thoughts about throwing a couple of combi players in veteran squads, um, hiding a Thunder Hammer on a Sarge or a Black Shield, or C using a cheap bikes squads to, with a Storm Shield as screen if you're trying to go uh, mono codex? Okay, so um, I don't know about combi players. I think they're quite expensive for what they are. Um, and obviously, if you want to use both profiles, you're at minus one to hit, which I do not like with plasma weapons. Um, hiding a Thunder Hammer, pretty good on the old Black Shield because he gets three attacks. But again, Thunder Hammers are quite expensive. And to be honest, I, it's so tricky with a Thunder Hammer. Um, they're only good against a couple of things, really. Um, apart from everything else, you, your guns are going to be... They're just too situational, I think, for the points that they cost. <laughs> Um, unless you really put in like three or four and then you thought, right, I'm going to, you know, match this up against a knight or a tank or something. But I just think they're too situational for the points and I'd rather keep some points back and spend it elsewhere. Um, see, using cheap, uh, do you know what, bikes, you are going to start to see in my bike squads, so, uh, in my Death Watch, a lot of bike squads now because they just get so much decker uh, with this new bolter rule. So um, you'll be seeing me probably running, you know, three units of maybe three to even six bikes. Um, yeah, it's going to be good because what you can do there is basically take big old unit and then uh, the captain with a storm shield or another... Um, uh, Storm Bolter, so it's just going to be so many shots there. Um, so Michael has said there's a lot of discussion regarding chess clocks. Um, regarding chess clocks uh, at the moment, do you think they are really the solution for horde armies or slow play? Uh, don't we want as much variation as possible in the armies as possible? Um, okay, cool. So, and also he said regarding Death Watch, looking to to find a combination to deal with heavy vehicles without resorting to allies. Any ideas? <laughs> Do you know what? I think the only good thing at killing uh, vehicles is the repulsor tank, or maybe even three twin-linked las cannon chaplain dreadnoughts uh, from Forge World, or also um, the Leviathan dreadnought from Forge World. But that is, or the more uh, the Mortis dreadnought with two twin las on it, but. It's not re in a lot of the events I play. I'm not allowed to use Forge World with ETC, so it really handicaps me. So that's kind of why you see me use a lot more allies in ITC events where Forge World's allowed. Yeah, I'll probably go with a bit more um, of, of some of those things I've mentioned. But the Storm, you know, Twin Storm Cannon Array on the Death Watch um, Dread is pretty decent because he's Strength Seven. I think I think it's minus two two damage, and you just play the plus one to wound stratagem on him. He's re-rolling ones to wound. It's pretty decent and strong. So um, yeah, I think that's a pretty a good way to go about things so I'm just going to close down my Facebook because it's going to start buzzing um, chess clocks are a great answer to the competitive environment okay it's not there chess clocks aren't put in place to inhibit horde armies it's, they're not there to say look don't bring a horde we want it in the thing there's there's a difference between a horde could still be 120 orcs um but it could just be not taking 200 cultists, which is just a, quite a boring army, really. Um, I can't imagine anyone really enjoys playing with that or anyone really playing enjoys playing against it. Um, so it, it stops the people that go, oh, this is a really good meta. Hopefully we are back, guys. Um, sorry about this. We just had a bit of an internet connection issue. Um, so apologies about that. Uh, hopefully I'm back. Can someone just comment to say that I'm back? So uh, apologies about this. Um, so anyway, what was I saying there? Um, yeah, it's not to basically inhibit it. It's just to make sure, you know, at the end of the day, what we want to make sure is that when you are in a game of Warhammer, time is one of your resources. Uh, Aiden I was listening to said this, and I really, really agree with him on this one. Time is a resource, and it's unfair for you to go to a tournament and somebody else take up 
all of that resources of yours. So um, yeah, essentially, if someone's used up all their time, that's Hey guys, sorry, we're having some real issues here. I think it's because my video is trying to upload as well at the same time and my internet just can't handle it. Okay, um, Gerard said, um, I'll be at work when you go live today, but I'll sneak into the background. Question, will VT consider has plans to expand to the States? We'd love to come to the States absolutely we'd love to come to the states um the plan is for next year for vanguard tactics to come over to the lvo so yeah that's one of the goals next year um then we've got sharing techniques to help make better players using troops to remove flies that bomb into your back line by removing the pivot part of the move forcing the supersonic to fly into a straight line something yeah um it was actually one of those things to um I can't sacrifice the upload. I'm on 40%. It took me five hours already to get this point. Um, anyway, so I actually played against nine flyers at the weekend, and two of those were the old um, bombers. So, um, yeah, from the Death Watch. Uh, um, Dark Eldar, sorry. Um, so, yeah, we can talk about that. Um, So then we've got another question here. Dorian is said about um, getting, I know you're probably getting tired of the Death Watch talk, but it's hard to have an educated discussion with people over the faction. Now that the points have shifted with the Bolter discipline being uh, bantered about, um, how has it affected your ideas for Death Watch? Does it want to make you take Primaris? Not really, but bikes, yes. I want to see a lot of bikes. I also started to look at 10 Terminators. That would be cool. Um, so anyway, guys, so that's the Patreon questions answered. I'm now going to um, basically see if I can bring in Mark. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll close this down. That should hopefully stop that um, and help the internet a little bit more. I'll pause my Dropbox to see if that's going to help and stop Okay, let's see if I can bring Mark in because he's just got home from the snow, and we can go over our event that we went we played in. Uh... We're just calling Mark. He's so not. Our event we played in. Uh, Mark, are you here? Mark? Hello, can you hear me? We we can, mate. Here he is. Look, shift click we resources. Just, Mark? Mark, Mark, turn off YouTube. <laughs> oh yes, apologies. Give me a moment. What an absolute amateur. <laughs> Have you turned it off yet? Uh, uh, Mark, bear with, yeah. me, bear with me a moment. Hello, oh my you? goodness. We can be. Guys, I'm ever so sorry about this. Here he is, look. Shift. Right. You turn it off YouTube? I have. That's it. I'm done. Excellent. Mark, welcome to the uh, welcome to the show. I've just been going through everyone's questions. Um, so I've just gone through all the Patreon questions. So obviously now I just need to whiz through um, and basically go through people's questions here. Uh, so we've got um, oh, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Kerman, is it? Hello, how do you model your power mule? Power Mall Terminators, can you show one of us? Um, literally what I do is I just take the Power Mall from the um, Death Watch veteran squad and literally just cut off the arm and stick it on um, instead of replacement of a sword or something. Um, so that's kind of what I do. I've just got loads of spare bits like that um, and kind of go with one of those really. Um, you could always get the Thunder Hammer boys um, and cut those, like fun cut off the Thunder Hammers and just put the Power Malls on instead. That would work. Um, what else have we got here? 
Any thoughts on Gene Steeler Colt blips? Sounds like they may be getting turn one deep strike essentially from what I hear. I do you know what? I haven't actually seen many of the leaks at the moment. Uh, Mark, have you seen any of the leaks from Gene Steeler Colt? Nothing yet. The only thing I've seen, which is not really a leak, was uh, I think Jeff Robinson put a picture up of the Gene Steeler Colt book, which obviously uh, Games Workshop had given to him a week in advance. Yep. But he gave away absolutely nothing, unfortunately. Of course he did, yeah. Well, we're actually going to be getting on Jeff onto Vanguard Tactics. So myself and Jeff played each other um, at the London Grand Tournament last year. Uh, we had a really good wicked game against each other. Um and Jeff won the invitational event at the LGT, and then me and him played each other in the in the main event. So uh, we got to know each other pretty well. So uh, I'm going to go on to his show, and he's going to come on here. So if you guys have got any questions for Jeff, because he is a, an absolute excellent resource when it comes to Gene Steeler Colt in Custode. So um, I'm sure on our Patreon, over on the Vanguard Tactics Patreon, when that gets announced, what we'll do is we'll say, look, if you've got a question for Jeff, then um, you know put it on that Patreon thread, and then we can obviously ask him. So guys, um, yeah, please do head, a, head over and become a Patreon if you would like to get Jeff to answer some of your questions or me to grill him, basically. So um, yeah. I'm sure you uh, are all probably wondering who won out of uh, me and Jeff right now, but we'll maybe we'll leave that one. We'll leave that one open. There's a uh, cliffhanger. Um, Jeff will try and get his own back at the LGT this year. What? You've just given it away, Mark. Well, uh, maybe uh, you'll need your own back. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, great. I, I created a cliffhanger and you ruined it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I, to be yeah, I was very fortunate. It's a long to, day, mate. Uh, I was very um, yeah lucky to um, get the win on on Jeff actually yeah um, I think I won it thanks to a couple of Reva jet bikes I was running it like turn seven yeah it's so close um, right so you guys are making it super official and professional so fast very impressive thank you so much y this new battle report I've just edited is even better so um, just wait for that one uh, a couple of hearts from Patrick cheers Patrick appreciate that. Um, BFS John think the FAQ supersedes that for match play not sure what that is in regards to um, here we go so Tom said any tips for Space Marine versus Gunline Tau I have issues with massive overwatch and suit drops not to mention the them dis disengaging with fly yeah mate you probably lose that one if I'm honest yeah, that's not a great matchup for Space Marines. Um, you, you, the thing is, you can't outrange Tau. Um, they'll just get you uh, from anywhere. And they've got great maneuverability. And also, we don't have enough bodies to put into uh, the gun line without getting, you know, taking a lot of casualties. Um, because you'll lose so many models, then you're ineffective actually in combat. At the end of the day, Warhammer is a game of rock, paper, scissors, and unfortunately for the Space Marines at the moment, the Tau is a big, um, I, I would say, rock to their, what is it, scissors, maybe? Um, now, the other thing... Paper, th perhaps. No, paper is beats rock, doesn't it? Anyway, you know what I mean. So, um, yeah. the only things that you can do is maybe take some characters that are able to um, like redeploy um, like Blood Angels for example with the old um, no overwatch anything like that maybe sneaking an Inquisitor into your gun line um, into your lines anyway should I say not gun line sneak them in they can also go in any transport so you could put them in a drop pod and then bring it down and then cast no overwatch and then send the boys in could be good uh, hiding a character behind line of sight block in let them go in um, or using some you know if things are in rhinos put the rhino in first soak up the overwatch with the vehicle because they're not charging you normally in a list you don't really sometimes like rhinos can actually uh, be a hindrance to you because obviously you know combat armies will wrap it tau aren't going to wrap you so that could be a way i mean we've come up with a few ideas there um and also just hitting the flanks. That's what I always try and do. Hit the flanks, slowly work my way in. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you're also penning them in, um, in, in a lot of the missions now where it's kind of like um, conti uh, com continuous scoring, they're going to struggle. So and now with the no boots on the ground rule, um, where even if you die, it's all about the points you scored, you could still win because they might have left it too late to then expand. 
Um, anyway, that could be an idea. So, what do you uh, think that the big weaknesses for Tau um, that you can exploit? Um, the fact that they have to stay still to be really effective. So not very... Not really. And when they do, then they start to lose their strength, which is that combined overwatch. Um, and then there are minuses to hit. Um, and any sort of... Guard can outrange them, which is then Tau struggle if they're outranged. Um, and then, obviously, Eldar put them at such a massive, like, minus one to hit and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I think they struggle with any sort of minus hitting and also when you can outrange them. Um, and also then sometimes even orcs, because they've got so many bodies, they can take some hits and lose a few boys, and they're still just going to start mopping up. And if they get surrounded, all they then need to start doing is piling consolidate, and they can't overwatch them, and then they're, you know, unfortunately kind of gone. So um, Sam said, I'm thinking of playing Ravenwing. I really like the fluff, but not very competitive army. Oh, I disagree, Sam. I disagree. Um, myself and Jack played a test game the other day, and he played Ravenwing, and he did incredibly good against... I took a, a pure knight disgusting list, um, and I proxied everything just to see if he could kill it, basically. And, um, oh, it's devastating. Um, I think I just won only by a couple of points, but that was pre the new Bolter rule. Um, I think that was even pre-chapter approved, so, yeah. Ravenwing can be good um, given the right list and also the right player handling the right list. So, um, Sam, if you need help with the list, then just drop me an email, uh, Stephen at Vanguard Tactics, and we can get that sorted for you. Okay, obviously, there is a charge, um, or you become a patron on our inner circle, and it's one of the things that you unlock anyway. So, um, yeah. Uh, Sorry, we'll just nip through these questions, Mark, and then we'll get on to the. Um, on no our, problem. Onto our tournament, mate. Um, we've got 55 people watching. I can't believe it live. Last time we had hey. four. Yep. So a, that's a quite a jump up. Yeah. So we've got people from um, California watching all over the world. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible. So regarding Centurion Devastated, yes. Ever build them into your list? If yes, why? If no, why? Um, they need some testing, but I think... I would love to see um, basically three Centurions backed up by a um, chapter banner and then some sort of like re-roll hit, re-roll wound combo buffs. Um, but given the um, Hurricane Bolters and also Heavy Bolters, the reason why I like that with a re-roll hit, re-roll wound, there's so many shots there. They're always moving. You can just move them forward, but they're not that expensive so your opponent is then like oh do i shoot them they're not that good but i think over the course of the game that many short shots is going to do a lot of work so um i actually think centurions could be back if you give them like the las cannons and the missile launchers someone's going to blow them off the board because they're going to be like they need to die but if they've just got hurricane bolters in heavy bolters you might even be able to take two squads of them compared to one squad all kitted out with a big heavy weaponry um so i think sometimes those smaller threats but not as big um can actually really do the work over the um it's like basically attrition over the game um because if you've then got like a Storm Raven or some other heavy hitting units like some Death Watch in there or a Knight or something, I don't know, some tank commanders, they're going to be like, right, they need to die and your Centurions are there like, yeah, no worries, we're just blapping away um, and they'll be taking boys down. So uh, I think they're actually pretty decent on that front in that side of things. So um, they need some testing. They're not going to be, you know, I wouldn't just plug in play and win with it straight away. But, you know, if I was to build a, um, a space marine list, I think I would try and... And the models are so good, Mark, aren't they? Yeah, super. Love them. Really, really good. I've got um, I've got some somewhere. And, yeah, I'm keen to... I think running nine would be brilliant. They just come out of nowhere. People would be like, what are they? I'd be like, just you wait and see. Sounds horrible. Yeah. With a little cheeky apothecary running from squad to squad, picking boys up. When you kill them, I'm shooting you back. Oh, tasty. Um, so, um, Chris Wilson has said, Stephen, what do you think about Long Fangs and Wolfram from Space Wolves? I play a Castellan Crast Loyal 32, Valhallen, and a battalion of Space Wolves with Wolfram and Long Fangs. Well, 
Chris Wilson, you are going to enjoy our new battle report, isn't he, Mark? I should hope so. And tell him why. Because we've got a uh, Space Wolves contingent with a Loyal 32 and with a Borrowed uh, Knight. Yeah, Crest as well. My first go with the uh, new Space Wolves Codex. It's not so new now, it's been out uh, a while, but I've been playing Jakari for quite a bit. Um, I run the Wolfen, I run different things, and uh, what you'll hear me say at the beginning of the video is that I'm testing some different lists with it. Um, I tested, uh, you know, a starter list. And I'm hoping to uh, use them in new battle reports coming up and then try and make a bit more of a, uh, a more brutal list as months go by. Yeah. So, to answer his question, I absolutely love Wolf and I think they're one of the best, um, I think they're the best assault unit in the game. Cool. I mean, that's, a big, that's a big cool. Ah, well, I'm, I'm going big with it. I, I love them. I think they're fantastic. I think uh, Wolfen on the charge now with Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields are absolutely delightful. Um, and they I get to fight when they die, which I didn't know. Yes, the Death Frenzy, yeah, very good. Plus the five up Phil the Pain. Oh, um, not Phil called Phil the Pain anymore, but that's what we know it as from uh, from seventh. Christy. Uh, oh, sorry, less. I thought. Oh. Sorry, I thought, sorry, Mark. I thought you're done there. Oh, I keep on going on about Space Wolves. Yeah. Why? But um, yeah, uh, Chris, check out our new um, battle report that will be dropping soon. Um, obviously, well, as soon as it goes live, I'll be sending everyone a message on Patreon to say it is, and also on our email list as well, which I can't believe has gr- grown to 400 is already in, in five weeks. 400 people on our email list. Uh, so you just need to head over to the website, and when you see the pop-up, pop your details in there, and um, I'll send all the details over when uh, everything drops, obviously, so you guys can get those notifications um, Christian said, have to say thank you, Vanguard Tactics, for playing the best army in for- uh, Warhammer 40k and being so professional about it. Thank you very much, uh, Christian. We really appreciate that. Um, that is our sort of goal is to remain professional at all times um, and just be really, just, yeah, have a great laugh with it all, really. But being fiercely competitive as best we can. So, uh, Michael said, what are your thoughts on the new Telemann rules? Uh, so that is the Dreadnought, the Custodian Dreadnought, isn't it, Mark, that one? Um, sure it is, yeah. It's the uh, Relic from the that was around for 30k, and then they've introduced quite a few new rules for the Custodes for uh, for 40k. I think the, the beta rules, they dropped uh, this week, didn't they? Yeah, I haven't actually had a look at them yet, to be fair. I have, and I believe that it got a uh, points drop, but I believe that the gun got a little nerf as well. So, also, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but behind me is the painting area, and uh, I'm cu- currently painting up some custodes, and I'm considering a telemon myself, so I'm Why torn between, well, I'm torn between a knight and a telemon, so the, uh, I think that they're a really nice unit, and, uh, we might be, uh, seeing them on a battle report coming up soon. That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah, so I have to sort of report back on that, um, on the old beta rules. Pablo has said, I play against a list with Marauder Bombers and Destroyers with a Baneblade in troops. How do you deal with a bunch of Flyers and then minus one to hit while not um, gimping yourself against other lists? Um, it It's really hard to know without seeing your list, to be honest. Um, it, I can't really comment. Um even with a minus one, they're not that difficult to take down. You should have something in your, um, either bringing in something as a soup um, or an ally, should I say. Um, there, there will be something to help you back. So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's so hard to know without seeing your lift. Um, any Death Guard advice would be great. Well, Felix, um, Vanguard Tactics, thank you to all our Patreon supporters have allowed us now to just buy a brand new Death Guard army. Um, we've got about 2,000, about, I think even about 3,000 points of Death Guard on the way. So you're going to be seeing loads of Death Guard. I'm going to be playing them. I'm going to get, get, tell these boys they can back off. These are going to be my Death Guard for a while. Mark's going to paint them. I'm going to play them. And I'm going to be putting down some absolute filth for a while. So uh, I can't comment just yet, but I'm sure I'll get something spicy when my head's in the game and I've had the good look through the codex and read everything. But uh, Mark, you, you're quite you're you're a fan, aren't you? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, having a go with them myself once we've painted them. Yeah. No, no. I think uh, Space Wolves against Death Guard could be a tasty little uh, encounter. Yeah, I know, that should be good. Um, so we've also got, what do you think of the Corvus Black Star? Does that have a place in the Death Watch Army list? It did until I played Mark. And uh, what happened, Mark, when you blew up my Corvus? What did I roll? Eight uh, ones? I was, oh, was it eight ones? I thought it was five ones. Uh, it felt like eight. 
Yeah, it was a lot of ones. I rolled, yeah, I think five out of eight ones. So um, basically lost my entire squad with it. So, um, no. Uh, the, <laughs> the thing is with the Corvus... If it had power the machine spirit, I'd say, yeah, it's a goer. But because it doesn't, hitting on fours with heavy weapons is just rubbish. Because you're taking two las cannons, one might hit, and then the um, then you're probably going to fail to wound anyway, especially if you roll like I do. Um, so, yeah, not great. You know, yeah, the hurricane bolt has got a little bit better, but you're so close to people anyway, that that's never going to really be a factor. Um, how are you using frag cannons? Um, I'm not. I leave them at home. So, um, that again, frag cannons need a lot of help. Um, they just don't do enough damage. They only damage two, and they just need more damage. If they were damage four, I'd, I'd be like, yep, taking some of them. But they're short range, um, and they're not enough strength. You need to be within half range. Just too, just far too situational, basically, and too expensive for what they do. In your opinion, with the new Bolter rule, are Terminators worth their points? Um, from Ian R. Blackshield, um, I think it depends. I think depending on the type of Terminators you take, um, if you the cheapest Terminators could actually be Death Watch because you can just take Power Swords rather than Power Fists. Uh, but Power Fists did take a point reduction as well. Um, it could be an option, you know. I think someone will take them, and I think we'll start to see some good play. So I wouldn't rule them out just yet. But I think it's just a walking, walking wall going forward, just 24 inches away, or Death Watch 30 inches away, hitting hard, just basically clearing everything off the lines and being a counter punch. It's pretty good. Um, would you say beta, uh, the beta bolter rules help make Terminators great again? I wouldn't say great. Would you, Mark? No, I don't think so. I think that the the greatest thing about uh, Terminators is the uh, armor. Um, also, you've got a different choice of weapons. Um, Stone Bolt, a Power Fist, and they can deep strike as well. But they're expensive. I think that's where that's the problem. They need to come down in price. Yeah. No, that's it. Think? No. Uh, yeah. Exactly. They're, they 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 need to be tougher, more wounds, better save. They're just too fragile at the moment. Yeah, that's the only problem. You, you, you fire a squad of Dark Reapers at them and they just die. Yeah. Just take the whole lot off. So, um, yeah. Um, oh, we've got Andrew Dickerson from Greetings from the Warps joined. Oh, the main man. Um, yeah, who has just run the event that we played in. So we're going to come on to that shortly in the next five minutes. I mean, guys, there are literally... Um, I've just scrolled down and there are hundreds of comments here absolutely hundreds so guys i think we're gonna have to move on um obviously i've been chatting already for an hour so guys um let's move on to the event so mark we played in greens from the warp i sure did and the uh the event was called war in the warp wasn't it have i got that right two right. two day event itc uh 1750 points we played mission um did we play mission six, five, four, three, and two in that order, wasn't it? Yeah, from the champions missions. Yeah, from the championship mission pack, we were the ones that were like, right, what's mission one? Let's look through that for the day, and then they <laughs> threw on its head. Oh, Ryan um, threw on its head in a completely uh, ruined our our day. But anyway, so Mark, who did you play game one? Oh, first of all, what list did you take? Game one. I took a uh, Drakari list with a little bit of um, psychic support yep. from uh, the Belltown craft world. What? Uh, Why Belltown? Uh, so I could take the relic, which gives the um, warlock uh, one CP. You can take, I think it's called the Spirit Stones of Amalathan or something uh, along those lines. And uh, it means you can give the warlock the reroll, um, deny, and um, uh, uh, psychic power. So that you can roll both dice, unlike a farce here, uh, roll both dice and try and get that power off if you really need it. Yeah. So I got, in my list was uh, three Talos, five Grotesques, uh, Urian Rakarth, Homunculus, three Ravagers, uh, an Archon, and the um, uh, the psychic contingent from the um, craft world was a farce here on a jet bike, a Warlock on a jet bike, and a Warlock on foot. Yeah, nice. It's got some good teeth there. You've got some counter punch from the grotesques. The racks are your screen. Um, it's got all the tricks. So, Mark, game one, who did you play against? Game one, played a brilliant guy called Dan. Um, first of all, before I get into that, I wanted to say, seeing as uh, 
Andrew was in the uh, in the lobby there as well. What a great event it was! Absolutely fantastic, brilliantly run, loads of space. Like the guys are excellent, brilliant venue. Food was good. Terrain was um, brilliant. Yeah, amazing. You'll see the pictures. I put them up on uh, some of my games on Instagram and put them on my Facebook, and you can see the different tables that we're playing on. They've spent a lot of time and money and effort. Um, I know those guys are uh, big into 30k and have recently got into 40k events, mm-hmm. and they've done an absolutely wonderful job. Uh, it's a small-ish event, um, the, uh, but still plenty of people there. Some very decent players there as well. Yeah, uh, no slouches for sure. Um, loads of beautifully <laughs> painted armies, absolutely super. Couldn't speak more high of it. Um, the group, if you're interested in joining, you'll find on Facebook called Greetings from the Wall. There's about a thousand people in it. Go and join it. The guys in there are brilliant. Posting yep. up about the painting they're doing and different things that are going on. There's, there's people from right across the, uh, right across Europe, I think, in, in that group. Um, well worth uh, joining up with. So good to take the time to give those guys some credit because it was really good. Yeah, I definitely recommend the event. You've got like a whole such, I mean, the terrain is amazing. Andrew is a top quality guy. Um, and yeah. it, 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 absolutely brilliant event. So I can't speak more highly of the, um, of the event at all. Um, and I'm looking forward to going to their next one. And I'd really recommend it to, you know, a whole selection of people, whether they're, uh, you're just thinking about doing your first tournament. It'd be great for you. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just got so many um, nice, you know, guys there that play. Um, I'm just going to see if I can. Oh, look at this! Can you see that, Mark? What I've just put on there or not? I've So this I'm just was on Skype. So I'm... oh, you can't I'm see, just but see your handsome face. That's all. Um, so I've just uploaded one of the pictures from my game, so um, you can oh, see that. You can see the terrain. Um, I'm on like this desert board with this orc terrain, which is co- really cool. I'm up against the Dakari. You'll see I just got bombed. Um, I'm at the back here, um, and I just got bombed by this big old, um, what's it called? The Dark Eldar Bomber? Uh, re- uh, Void Raven. Yeah, I just got bombed by that. So um, I lost literally my entire squad of Death Watch that was sat next to my Watchmaster on that um, bit of terrain there in, what, in my first turn, which was a loss of 200 points before I even got going. But anyway, um, that yeah, so I just thought I'd show you a little bit of the terrain there so you guys can see how great some of these boards are. I'll see if I can put some more pictures up as we go through it as well. But um, yeah, so t- first game, Mark, who's it against? A uh, guy called Dan, absolutely brilliant bloke. I think it was his first ever tournament. Um, he played Blood Angels, and uh, we had a, a cracker of a game. It's really good. Um, he had an interesting list. He was running a Repulsor, uh, Storm Raven, ten Hellblasters, which frightened the life out of me, um, <laughs> especially the way he uh, deployed them. Yeah. Um, so, Tessessors, Smash Captain, Sanguinary Guard, um, and the uh, Sanguinary Peace, Priest as well, should I say? Yeah. Uh, and I think a couple of other uh, troops, Primaries Captain. Um, so quite a Primaries heavy, heavy uh, list. Um, luckily, I got to go first, and uh, he put his hell blasters on top of a of a, of a building. He and didn't. I managed to, he certainly did, and I managed to deal with them before they were able to get a shot out, um, which was unlucky for him. Um, we I progressively uh, managed to reduce his army, and then I think we got to about turn five. With he only had a, a few dudes left at the end, but he played really well, especially for somebody that uh, was first time at a tournament. It's a really, really enjoyable game, and I and I managed to uh, win. I think by twenty five points to uh, twelve, something like that, in the first game. Nice, nice. So my great start. So you are one one for one then. Yeah. So what about your first game? Who did you have? So I played a guy called Chris. Um, and he had a Dark Eldar army, so he had the old bomber, he had another flyer, he had the three ravagers, he had um, a, a, a witch battalion, he had a Dakari battalion, he had a... He just basically had so many command points, and I, I think he spent a million even before the game started, and he had still had a million left. So, um, yeah, it was absolutely incredible. So what I'll do is basically bring up that picture again, and I can sort of talk over um, what... It, it kind of shows things off a little bit better. Um, so, um, I, did I go first? I can't really remember. I think I might have. Um, and basically, all I did turn one was decided to shoot, I think, a Ravager and some Dark Eldar boys down to get first strike um, with my knight. 
And um, this was the mission where I think if you had a character on an objective or something, you got a bonus point or um, a couple. Or was it like two or three characters on a objective? You scored a bonus point. Yeah, was it, I think it was. If you had three characters within an objective, yeah, uh, even in your turn, not the battle round, you got a bonus point. Yeah, something like that. So, um, um, yeah, that was. It, that game went really well for me. Um, I he left a little gap at the back. Um, you can see on this picture actually behind his archon there are some. Um, you've got like some cabalite warriors on a piece of terrain there, and then also behind like the left hand corner you can see that sort of rocky terrain. Mark, obviously you can't see this, so you're gonna have to imagine. But there's some witches back there screening me out. But he left yeah. a little gap behind his archon, and I just dropped down with a unit of death watch um, and basically dropped a unit in there they charged in um and then i just basically used the knight and dropped down another two squads near him cleared off all the racks um and then the knight just went through and steamrolled everything oh and what i also did as well in this game um this was a really good play by my part if i say so myself but um, i'm just going to see if i can basically find the um find the picture i've got it right here so um i move move moved he had his um he had a raider full of witches and it was coming towards my lines and i thought if that hits my guardsmen i'm gonna lose them all and i'll lose all of my screen and i'll lose all of my backfield holders um and then they'll start tagging my tank commander and things like that so um basically what i did was um You'll see right now when I bring this up, um, you're going to see it right now. This picture is about to upload any time today. Um, so you can see here in this in this picture, what I did was I moved, moved, moved my guardsmen because they basically move in advance, move in advance and completely surrounded this. And this is a top tactic completely um, surrounded his transport vehicle here and then what I did was I just blew it up so then he lost 10 witches because he couldn't deploy a single model because you have to remove that model off before you put the um, witches down and they have they can't go within an inch of my guys so um, that's one of your dirty tricks uh, Steve yeah, it's one of my um, horrible, horrible tricks. So um, when I killed that and then blew, blew, you know, basically killed the witches for free, um, absolutely fantastic tactic that was. And you can see on this main picture, it was screaming towards my lines. And, and yeah, and anyway, I ended up winning that game. Um, but we had a lovely, great game, and it was really, really enjoyable. Um, and Chris said he really enjoyed it as well. And he's actually a watcher of Vanguard Tactics. So, um uh, Chris, if you're watching, thanks so much for the game. Really appreciate it. It was excellent to play you. So um, I think I won that game 38-6. So I nearly maxed out because I think the maximum is 42 you can win. So it's a good win for me. Super. So then, game two, Mark. Who was yours against? Game two, I was up against Maxwell, who was uh, last year's winner of that tournament. Oh, you've got a nice draw then. Well, he had a, a list that wasn't quite as disgusting as the when he won it last time um he took a uh eldari soup list and he had some dark eldar in there he had uh i think it was five venoms um with a couple of archons and uh they're basically uh blaster venoms so you've got five cavalites one takes a blaster the other four take the poison weapons yeah uh, then he had some uh a couple of farseers and uh, some Forge World units, I think they are. Yep. The Hornets. And um, he had nine of them? To, I'm going to be back in one yeah. set. You carry on telling the guys what he had. Yeah, no. So he took uh, these Hornets. They are Forge World unit, and they, uh, they're they like a little I think, flyer, grav tank sort of thing. And um, they put out, pump out a disgusting amount of um, shots. The, um, uh, they also have a, uh, a missile as well, which we can as a you know, infantry killer profile or tank killer profile. Um, the um, and what occurred was that we uh, we both deployed pretty aggressively, quite close to each other, and I I'd st stuck the Talos and the grotesques right on the the line. The deployment was I can't remember the name of it, but it's, I call it the quarters. So you've got the circle in the, the middle. Um, we were very close to each other, and it was a turn one charge for, for either of us. 
and uh, I got the, I won the roll off to go first. And before we moved the model, we said to each other, "Whoever goes first wins this." And he seized on me. Uh, the it's not nice when people do that, Mark, is it? It's unpleasant, <laughs> especially uh, when you've been aggressive and your deployment. Um, he he took he took full advantage of it and wiped the grotex off uh, basically before I got a chance to do anything with them. Uh, fair play to him as well, but done exactly the same thing. Um, I was I'd lined those venoms up for a turn one charge for the Talos and for the uh, grotesques, and I was hoping to do some damage. I didn't get the opportunity, and I was sort of on the back foot from from there on really. Um, I managed to uh, do uh, be reasonably successful, and uh, they, we played out the game. But he whittled down my force in that first turn, where I lost so many guys, really, uh, really, you know, um, did me in basically. So I think we got to turn five, and it was twenty twenty one to Maxwell. They won by a point. Great game though, and an absolutely brilliant bloke. Really, really nice to play. Was helping me out with uh, throughout the game because the. Some of the craft world stuff I'm fairly new to. Um, really good guy, really good opponent, and, and uh, actually sort of uh, said that I'm gonna because he lives quite local to me. Going to meet up and play him again in the future. Um, the rematch, bit of revenge, maybe uh, different list. So nice. So really good game. What about your game too? How did you go? Um, Felix has just said, "Aren't the Jakari flies kind of trash?" No. In a nutshell, and you'll find out when I get onto my game four. <laughs> so my game two up against a guy called Michael we've played each other before um, in the last time we played at Greetings to the Warp um, and I won that last game he took his guard I took my Eldar so he's taken Sisters from the new chapter approved I'm taking obviously the old Death Watch and um, yeah I had a, I whiffed turn one my knight did nothing um, I didn't even get first strike it was ridiculous um, so I really really whiffed hard um, and what I'll do now is I'll just bring up the picture um, of this game. So you'll see another fantastic uh, battle battlefield here. Um, there we go, look. Another beautiful one. So we're on the lava map. Um, and he had like nine vehicles. So immolators, he had three of the exorcists that are basically got a four up and runnable save. <coughs> they can hit on twos. They do D6 shot, strength eight, minus four. Um, or minus three, and then d6 damage. Um, so I deployed um, pretty conservatively. Um, and anyway, I whiffed turn one, barely killed anything. And then he's, he, he can do a lot of pre-game moves as well. You can see him there just moving his immolators up even before he started the game. Um, so I deployed really defensively. So he couldn't get within melter range of my knight, turn one. But then turn two... He opened up with the first exorcist, rolled a six for how many hits he got. He then wounded with four of them out of the six. And then, so I played my stratagem, three plus invulnerable save. I then roll this. Three ones off the bat. Standard for you, mate. So um, I re-roll one of them. With the free re-roll that I get, saved it. Okay, cool. So a two go through of my three ones. He then rolls. He gets two dice, two d6 damage. Guess what he rolled, guys? Double six for damage. So I've just lost half of my knight from a complete whiff of shooting. He then makes. He, ne he then does the next two, um, and I'm then forced to make another four saves, and I fail another two of them. Uh, sorry, I ended up failing five out of seven, three plus invulnerable saves, and he rolls exactly 24 damage, and I lose my night game to, uh, turn two. At that point, it was pretty much game, if I'm honest. Um, I was like, well, that's it. I've got nothing to kill all your nine vehicles now that are still in play. I've got one tank commander. Um, but uh, do you know what? I carried on playing, kept my head down, and I just did ex all what I could. I then dropped really defensively, um, used terrain well with my death watch, tag tanks, blew them up. Um, it's really hard as well. Like I blew up one vehicle and wrapped it, and I found out that there was no girls left inside because because he's got so many transports. It was really hard to know in the, during the game what had what left in it. So I thought there was some girls left in it. Apparently there wasn't. 
Um, so I surrounded it, blew it up, and he's like, oh, there's nothing inside. And I was like, oh, great. So I just focused on the wrong thing. So my fault, I should have double-checked at the start, or we should have used counters or something to say if they're... And that's just a tip, guys. Use little game aids like that, not just for yourself, but also for your opponent. Um, so, yeah, we had a really close game, and anyway, it come to it. And um, I managed to get a draw. So I was really happy with that. I managed to get a draw, 22 all. Yeah, but really good game against Michael. We always have a really tough game, so uh, I'm sure we'll play each other again soon, um, and I look forward to that. Um, hopefully he won't roll so many sixes. And literally, he's doing his flamer attacks, and it was like, six, 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 damage, That's six, six. It's worse than playing you, Mark. He should have tried using his dice. No. I just, I'm giving up on dice. <laughs> just giving up, mate. Um, so yeah, that was my game two. So game three, who do you play? I played uh, Gackle Mark. Oh yeah. Um, the uh, he won last time. Something I'm very jealous of. Uh, best painted. Yep. Uh, he had Space Wolves, so it broke my heart to uh, shoot them. Uh, I managed it though. Um, absolutely brilliant bloke. Uh, met him last time we went to Green the, the Walk. The uh, <clears throat> I think we rolled again. What I refer to as the quarters. Yeah. Uh, he, he was running uh, Bjorn, two Vendreds, two squads of Long Fangs, uh, one in a drop pod. Um, he's he had uh, Wolf Lord on a Thunder Wolf. Um, he had some Thunder Wolf cavalry. He had some uh, Grey Hunters. Uh, so the game we set up. I managed to screen out uh, basically the, the whole quarter. And keep my ravagers right in the corner to yep. use the rain. Um, <clears throat> the because I was frightened of uh, what he was going to drop, uh, you know, in deep strike, come down with this uh, drop pod, get the melted guys out, and possibly blow my ravagers up. So I managed to screen all that out. I got the first turn, and I managed to doom and jinx um, Vend Red. Managed to get rid of that. Um, then there was some his turn. There was some combat beyond. Versus the um, the grotesques and yep. the talots. Um, Fixate and Matt came really hand where he got uh, beyond for um, last. And I'm on, I used a strategy to reroll uh, wounds um, from the talots, and then I managed to take beyond off the board. And by that time, the three Vendreds, the um, uh, beyond's gone, the long fangs, I managed to get rid of a pack, a pack of those. Uh, and then he'd positioned his. Um, uh, Thunderwolf Cavalry at the back there came surging in and I managed to shoot and smite them before they got to Talos um, so luckily um, I managed to thank you, uh, Rachel's my lovely wife who just passed me a cup of tea which is a wonderful thing um, the, uh, I managed to get rid of uh, uh, most of the stuff that was going to do me any harm cleared uh, it off and it was a pretty successful win I think I won 35-2 uh, in that game um, but a brilliant guy, great opponent, beautiful army. Um, it was fairly brutal for him. Um, it was a bad matchup. Space Wolves, you know, against Drakari, that you're using the range of your of my razor wings, of my ravagers to uh, um, basically get, you know, my secondaries. I've got recon uh, using the planes. Yeah. Um, shot everything off the board with the disintegrator cannons. And there was, wasn't a great deal they could do about it. It's very tough for an assault army to to combat that. Yeah. Um, you, you've got I so many threats, well. haven't you, in different layers? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, sure. So I can't speak highly enough of him. Lovely guy. Um, and but it was a you know a, a fairly brutal win for me. Nice. Um, so game three for you. So I'm going to bring up another picture now. If you can keep hearing all these little bleeps, guys, just because I'm um, just sending over images to my phone, uh, my TV, to um, basically bring it up. So I think it's this one. Could be wrong. We'll see. Ah, here we go. Right, so I'm up against one of the funkiest lists ever from a really lovely guy called Toby. Um, he had four custodian dreadnoughts. Um... We then had, so he had four custodian dreadnoughts. He had a custodian banner to give everyone minus one to hit. He then had a custodian HQ. Um, and guys, look at these beautiful tables, by the way. Like every one I've showed you is absolutely stunning. So again, uh, Andrew, like it's just incredible to go to a tournament and play on boards like this. 
Um, so he had he had four dreadnoughts, uh, some sort of commander like boy uh, minus one to hit. So obviously a character there, and then he had nine assassins. So he had three eversaws. Um, he had basically three of every type of assassin. No, oh, hang on, it twelve assassins. That is, isn't it? Because there's he had three vindicators, three Calexus, three Calidus, and three eversaws. Yeah, twelve assassins. Um, Interesting. And- Oh my god! In in turn one, whiffed again. Didn't I? Like I went first, and I thought, okay, well I'll try and kill a dreadnought. Couldn't even kill a dreadnought in a turn. So um, yeah, absolutely awful. Um, I, but he basically had a dreadnought left with four wounds after my whole round of shooting. But I um, my death watch on cover, and also now within like bolter range because I know he's got mainly combat. Um, Knights, uh, sorry, combat um, dreads. One of them's got a melter gun, and one of them's got, and two of them have got the assault cannons. So I thought, okay, against the assault cannons, I might be okay if I'm in cover. Um, so then what we did, turn two, I moved the knight forward, and I dropped. You see where that big pile of dice is? I dropped the unit down there, um, and I basically killed two dreadnoughts that turn. So that was quite big because what I killed the one with four wounds left with all my storm bolters that were on the board and then my tank commander and then my knight then killed the other one. So that was cool. Um and then turn two I dropped down there and I dropped another squad of Death Watch right in his backfield. So I'm really then spreading him out and I really zoned out as much as I possibly could um his assassins. But he said to me, yeah the average on my assassins when they drop in, because one of them can come in D six plus three and I zoned out six inches. I thought, okay, well, he should, you know, statistically roll a six, like be six inches away so he won't be able to drop in. Oh, no. He rolled a four on every one. Uh, sorry, a one on every one. So he came down within four <coughs> inches in my back lines. So I had two, like, the assassins that make me spend the extra CPs and they ignore invulnerable saves. He then had the other ones dropping in that you could only hit him on sixes and then I had the Eversaws charging me. But I played my stratagems well. I used plus one to wound on my storm bolters against his dreadnoughts. Um, I used Ospex scan on an Eversaw assassin that dropped in on the backfield, so that killed off an Eversaw assassin in his movement turn. He then charged in um, with an Eversaw assassin in one place, and then the other Ever- Eversaw in another place into another squad. I used two CPs to um, uh, basically strike before he did, so interrupt combat, killed another Eversaw before he got to attack. So I used my CPs well. Um, and I ended up winning that game. Um, I can't remember the score in that one, um, but yeah, it was another win for me. And really, really good, enjoyable game against Toby. Um, so then at this point, I'm on two wins and a draw. Uh, so yeah, another good game. So Mark, it's day two now, game four. Who are you up against? Uh, game one of, uh, or game, sorry, it's game four, day two, should I say. Um, I was up against uh, Mike, mm-hmm. and he took uh, Craftworld Beltan, um, an entirely Beltan list. Uh, he had Shiny Spears, Wind Riders, uh, the Avatar of Cain, which I've never seen on the table before, uh, yep. which he did beautifully, looked awesome, uh, a Wraith Knight, a Crimson Hunter, a um, couple of tanks. Yeah, a Falcon and, uh, as well, and these Striking Scorpions, yeah. a whole mix. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Warp Hunter as well, mm-hmm. and with the uh, obnoxious flamer. Yep. So, the, what happened? I we had uh, Dawn of War deployment, and uh, I sold him the dummy with a uh, with putting on razor wings in the the sort of left hand side, and then started to pile things up in the middle. And I knew I had more drops than him because I've got more drops than everybody apart from a guard player. Yeah. Um, and I. At the very end, after we deployed everything, uh, I managed to put my ravages in the bottom right-hand corner. If you go onto the Instagram account or the uh, uh, Facebook page, I put a photo up from it on Sunday morning um, to show that uh, that battle going on. Um, I screened screened out, put the uh, psychic support behind, and I knew that I had greater range than he did. Yeah. So I he got first turn. Um, Brought the Wind Riders up, tried to get rid of the Talos. Um, I think managed to get rid of Talos in the in the first turn. Um, 
then brought the shining spears down the next round and I managed to use my range to just progressively take uh, sort of take his units off the board and he's in my first turn what he'd done was a bit of a gamble he pushed his force here the warlock up the board and I managed to remove it so um, I was lucky to get slip lord early doors that meant he was without a uh, Uh, Petro, so um, it didn't didn't really help him to to take off a Talos because he, he doomed the Talos, and that's why I had to get rid of one um, in the first turn. So it was a fairly substantial win for me, and I I was um, I'd left his units on the board so that I could go to six turns. Yeah. So I, I, I could have tabled him probably by turn four. Um, the and I took it to six so I could try and get maximum points. Give a slow death mark. I like it. Yeah. Cheeky. Just to really rub salt in the wounds, which I didn't mean to do because he was a lovely guy. Um, the uh, but he, he helped me out. He, we we math hammered it out. Um, he was totally cool about it. And he's like, I just want to get lunch, and you're like, and no, like, and you're not getting lunch, mate. Yeah, yeah. No, I want more points. I need, I need, th- I need thirty six points, please. Yeah. Um, it ended up thirty six fifteen, um, and the. I lost as a bit of a battering ram. It took a lot of stick, and I rolled really, really obnoxiously, oh, uh, which was horrible for him. Yeah, yeah. Good. We had a bit of an um, interruption uh, on there, Mark. But um, yeah, so you you won thirty five, something like that, wasn't it? Um, so you then after that game, you were then in fourth place with three wins and a loss. I was three and one at one point, flying high. Yeah. So in your goal going into this was to win, go three and two, wasn't it? Yeah, that was it. That was what I was looking for. It would be a big improvement on the... I think there's a big difference between two and three and three and two. Yeah. I think it's... Yeah, you know, in a tournament like that, you're, you're sort of placing around the top ten, three and two, especially if you've, you've had some good wins. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been working at it for a while to try and... I've been working at it to try and improve. Yeah. And so... At that point, it was anything was a, everything was a bonus, and that's what we've literally been working on. It every game what you play, we're analysing it. We're talking in the car, right? We you know us talking you through the threats. Okay, if he does this, turn one, do that, and execute the plan, and it worked, mate. Which is exactly what we want to do, isn't it? In any restaurant you and I are in, there's generally a knife and fork that's a ravager and a, a salt pot that's a, a set of racks or whatever it is, or a knight or something like that. That we must bore the diners around us immensely with this uh, tactical talk but it's been a massive help so I thank you very much for it oh mate I, know, I love it so then um, I play the worst list in the history of lists <laughs> yeah but against one of the nicest guys you ever meet yeah. so I play against a guy called Ben who brought the Eldari flyer list eight Eldar flyers eight he had two hemlocks three crimson hunters uh, no Two Hemlocks, two Crimson Hunters, two Ravenwing Bombers, and two Razorwing Jet Fighters. Two of each. Um, he then had uh, an Autark on a jet bike. He then had a Farseer. Um, and he then had um, three units of like troops, basically. And that was it, right? So, we set up his ITC-style um, um, terrain. So, there's one building I can hide some units in, and that is it. Unfortunately, the rest was open for me. So, I was a bit... I was in a bad way. It wasn't looking good. Um, and I was like, right, I get the plus one. Cool. Going to do all right here. Got my knight. I took the relic from my battle commander, uh, my tank commander. It's like giving the new relic from Vigilus. Flat three damage. Crass knight. Four up and vulnerable save. Going to do this. Okay, I can, I can do it. I can play well. Use my Death Watch boys. You know, play the mission. Clear the troops off. And kill as many of these planes as I possibly could. Anyway, so... We deploy. I'm like, okay, I'm in an all right position. Um, and Ben is a lovely guy. I see him at so many events, like the Glasshammer Open he was at. He's at Battlefield. Um, super nice guy and very, very good tournament player. So anyway, we're rolling to go first. I get the plus one. What do I roll? A one. That's it. So then um, he then moves over with his uh, Farseer. Gets Doom off on my knight, obviously. Didn't fail it. Um, he used a re-roll as well. Um, he then came over with his hemlock, jinxed me. Did he fail it? No, he did not. He had a 50-50 chance on it and obviously made it. 
Um, so my knight is jinxed. I'm doomed. I then went to rotate iron shield and he was like, no, I'm going to vec that. So great. I'm on a five up and runnable save at this point. Brilliant. So then I lose my knight. Um, and then he does a smite, three wounds straight off. Brilliant. Um, he then puts two, um, dark lances into me. What's it called from the bomber, the knight raven yeah, bomber? That's, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, the, uh, D6 shirt, damage. Nine, are they? D6 shirt. damage, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, so he rolls an 11 on damage. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I can see how this is going. Next At one. Least one less than Mike from the second game. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> but the Hemlock's already done three mortal wounds. So anyway, then next one opens up. Pff, boom, dead. So my knight's lost from like literally three planes. Um, he then just kills my tank commander with his other planes. And he then clears off a unit of guardsmen. I'm like, well, that's game. I've got nothing now, <laughs> nothing to kill a plane, right? Um, so, um, yeah, not great at all. Couldn't save a thing, um, and that was pretty much game. So I played out as best as I possibly could. Oh, and then my turn two, right? Oh, so my turn one, my Death Watch get out. They start running over to an objective. They shoot at a plane, whiff, obviously, because um, it's got all the minuses on to hit, and I just rolled abysmally. And then I charge into a Farseer, and I'm like, do you know what? Screw the Farseer. I'm going to get first strike. I can kill that Farseer in combat. I get 20, 24 attacks I get. Okay, I'm hitting on threes. He plays lightning fast reflexes. Okay, I'm hitting on fours. All right. Well, 20, um, I've got 24, so 12 should at least hit. Okay, so 12 should hit. I wound on threes. All right, so then what's that? Nine go through. He's got a four up and vulnerable save, 50 50. Um, he's dead, basically. Right? He took two wounds. <laughs> two wounds he took. So I was like, right, three CPs going in, fighting again. Did another two wounds. He's left with one wound left. I put 44 attacks into this Farseer and he didn't die. And me and Ben were just like, how has that just happened? I could not, like, my, I rolled so badly and I just watched him roll fours and I was like, give me a break. Give me a break. So then I had to drop down some Death Watch boys near the Farseer to kill him off. Um, so I didn't get first strike, which was massive. That also meant that I didn't um, score anything that turn. I didn't kill anything that turn in ICT, which is big. Um, and then my Death Watch dropped down in different areas to avoid getting bombed. Um, so obviously I lost that squad because he just flew over and killed them in his next turn. Um, have I got a picture here, actually? Let me see if I can bring up a picture of this board that we played on. Um, I'm going to guess this this one. I could be wrong. Oh, there we go. Look, you can see the fun I had. Um, so, yeah, he had that disgustingness. So, um, basically, this was literally just as the game started, uh, his first turn. So he had some rangers in the back left-hand corner. I dropped down there, a squad and my captain. Failed two charges, which was big, so I couldn't clear him off an objective. Um, I just, none of the dice rolls were going my way. Um, I scored 12 points in the end, which I was happy with. I managed to score something, but this building at the bottom right I was where I just had like a couple of characters in there and two units of guard and then every turn I just sent out a unit to the objective in this little building to the left hand screen near my pen um, and then also the one in front of me so I was just sending out a unit to basically grab the objective and then unfortunately die so um, I just played as best as I could but you know me and Ben went through it um, at the end there's nothing I could have done differently apart from go first and him not roll so many fours with his farce here so, yeah, that was it. But if I kill a couple of planes with my knight and my commander, I've got a chance. But And then I just need him to fail maybe one of his powers. Um, and also, if I go first, he then probably plays two CPs to get the uh, plus one cover. Um, he'll then have to play lightning fast reflexes, maybe re-roll a die. So he's probably down five CPs. So then when it comes to my turn, he might not have enough to vect me. So that changes that game sh you know, straight away. He might not have enough firepower to kill my knight. Then I can obviously play one CP to keep him fighting on full bracket. I might have my knight alive for two turns. And that all of a sudden becomes a very different matchup. So, um, but going second against that list is just pff, dreadful. So anyway, that was my game four. So your game five, and you're up against Elliot. I am, yes. So uh, you may have come across Elliot if you have been to uh, War on the World and played in uh, the GTs, possibly the uh, heats, throwing uh, skulls, or something like that. Skulls. 
Yeah, he, he was. Uh, I met him there previously. Pretty good at the rules, wasn't he, Mark? He was very good at the rules. He kind of knew is, what they were. I know, which was a comment I made to you afterwards, and I said, uh, I know this may sound silly, but he really knew the rules inside out because now I believe he's part of the rules writing team. Well, you should know him, yeah. Which basically means I play somebody that is a Warhammer professional. That's mm. a you play you, you're involved in Warhammer for your job, then you've got to be good. Yeah, and he was playing Custodes, wasn't he? So he was. He had a uh, loyal thirty-two, and he had a uh, uh, battalion of Custodes. So he had three lots of three bikes, a shield captain. Um, and two, uh, three sets of three guys on foot with a, a shield captain on foot as well. Um, two company commanders, obviously, um, and that took him up to 1750. Um, it was a really cagey, tense game. We we rolled hammer and anvil. Um, he gave me. He got. He went first, and he said, "Why?" Well, he rolled to go first. I uh, got it, and then he gave me first turn. And I think I, you was managed to use two of the uh, missiles that had 48 inch range from my uh, razor wings, and that was it. That was the only thing I could shoot. Um, then I don't think we actually killed uh, models. We don't kill the full unit till about turn three or something like this. And um, I was I was waiting for him to deep strike two of the units of bikes, and um, he did so. And I'd screened everything out so they couldn't get in anywhere, but it meant that I wasn't offensive enough. Um, my plan going into it was to be cautious, be patient, and wait a little bit. I did so, and really it hurt me because he he got points early doors in the first two uh, two turns where I didn't get many points, and I had to try and catch up at the end. I think we got to we did well. We got to turn five. Um, going into turn six, we sort of my family it out. I'd have got a couple more points, but not. Uh, enough, and he won. I think it was twenty-five, nineteen. Um, Close game. It was a really, really tactical, cagey game, um, and I think I mean, that the credit to you, mate. Like the two games you lost, then you lost to the winner of the competition last time. You lost yeah. to a GW um, tournament organizer in you know rules writer. He's a fantastic player. I've played him as well, Elliot, in another competition. Um, and you lost only by a couple of points in the first game and then obviously only by a few points in the second game so um, and also you prevented him from scoring a lot because most people were winning like 30 40 points so mate obviously incredibly you know you, you played incredibly well Mark in uh, credit to you well the, I'd like to say that Elliot was a terrific bloke and he was so chilled and um, his army was painted beautifully like uh, what a nice guy to play in my fifth game as well um, lovely, lovely bloke. Really, I didn't enjoy the game that much whilst I was playing it because I was so nervous. And he was like, "Hey, it's cool. I'm chilled out. Don't worry." You know that the yeah, they, you're, uh, you're like this trying to roll your dice. So they're already shaking before they've gone. Yeah. And um, what one of the things that went against me was uh, two things actually, because I'd rolled so obnoxiously for quite some time in the previous uh, games in the tournament. Karma came back and kicked me in the ass and said, "I'm going to make you whiff big time." Yeah, uh, there was also a moment where this was a bit of an error from my uh, on my behalf. He had a shield captain, and I really needed to get rid of him. I could see that the shield captain was primed to get into my ravagers, hit them in the assault phase, and do some serious damage. Lose one or two ravagers, possibly. So I moved the farseer and the warlock over to there. Doomed him. Uh, Jinx didn't go off, unfortunately. Um, Smite didn't go off. And, but he was doomed, and I thought, okay, I'll, I'm just going to put plenty of fire, firepower into him. So I put um, all 27 disintegrator shots into him. Yeah. And um, doomed as well, re-rolling wounds. Uh, he took four damage. So Elliot rolled fours like there was no tomorrow. Threes, should I say, like there was no tomorrow. And he had two wounds left, and then that was a, the turning point in the game, if you like. I'd, I'd wasted... Not wasted, but I'd used all my shooting, and I really needed to be using it around the board to take other things off, so I could uh, I could try and um, you know he couldn't hold objectives or he couldn't fight me as well, couldn't take as many models off. And I really struggled. And the next turn, uh, he pitched up with a shield captain. I smited him, took two wounds, and he died instantly. So um, that Smite. was pretty Smite's pretty devastating forward. for me. That um, um, the toughness of that guy. 
Yeah, brutal. So, um, Ian Pitkin has said, you are notorious for rolling ones, I noticed. Yes, I am, mate. If I could, <laughs> if I could roll averagely, I think I'd be dangerous. I think I'd be a good player if I could roll I'll averagely. champion, possibly, yeah. Well... We'll see, but um, all I need to do is just roll statistically average, and I think I'd be a pretty good player. But as I can't, yeah, I'm just handicapped. And I always get the worst matchups at events. Every list I take, I'm like, ah, it will kill the meta list. And it's like, no, just have this random list that, you know, like my list is really good against hordes um, in orcs. And the winner of the event, Simon Pridus, fantastic player, plays orcs. I was I was begging for that matchup. I'd be like, give me orcs, give you know, I yeah. want it um, because I've got the storm bolters that deal with orcs. Lovely, like just <laughs> mow them down. So, um, but no, I get you know, um, game one MSU loads of like Eldari vehicles. Game two, I'm up against nine vehicles. Game three, I'm up against uh, four Dreadnoughts in, you know, 12 Assassins that you can't even target because you've got to kill the Dreadnoughts first. And then game four, I'm up against uh, n- uh, eight planes. I just I just get the worst matchups ever. Anyway, so um, we've had another what question. About, what about game five then, mate? How did you get on game five? Hang on a minute. Two seconds, I'll get onto that one. So then uh, okay. we've had another question here from... Um, I, I'm, I really can't... Um, sorry, I'm not very good at names. It's... I'm going to go with Mal, okay? So uh, do you have any other way to support Vanguard Tactics aside from Patreon? Um, literally by subscribing to YouTube, by sharing it with your friends. Um, you know, if you're in a WhatsApp group and say, oh, guys, you know, le- listen to Vanguard Tactics. They do some pretty de- decent voxcasts or this Ask VT that we're going to call it from now on. Um, you can join our email list, but it's just subscribing and sharing into any Facebook groups you're in. Sharing our videos just really helps us grow. So, um, yeah, if you want to support us, um, and you don't want to become a Patreon or you can't, then that would just be really appreciated. And tag us in as well. Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, <clears throat> my game five. I'm up against another lovely guy. There's a theme going here, isn't there? Yes. Um, and I'm up against... Really, like a lovely, lovely gentleman that we're uh, uh, a delight to play against. So, I'm back on the table I played on earlier, the lava table. Um, and I'm up against the Necrons. And obviously, if you watch me play, this is a very similar list to the list I lost against when Dan played Necrons. So I was like, oh, no, not Necrons. I hate these boys. Um, so he's got two of those Doomsday arcs. So I was like, he's got Wraiths. He's got Destroyers. He's got like, a lot of combat boys as well. So it's basically a combat Necron army. Um, and um, I go first, funny enough. How weird is that? Yeah, makes a change. Turn out for the books. Um, so then I... Actually rolled quite well, <coughs> and I managed to kill a Doomsday Arc turn one. I was pretty happy with that. Um, and then I also killed a unit of Immortals as well, which were kind of at the front. Um, so that was one of my points for Mark for Death. So got rid of uh, the Doomsday Arc and that thing, so pretty decent turn for me. He then retaliated and then put 11 out of 12 wounds from one Doomsday Arc on my tank commander. So... um I had just this one tank, uh, one wound left on my tank commander, so he was pretty much useless. So he hit back pretty hard in his first turn. Um, but he came forward with his wraith, so I moved, I screened him out really well with my guardsmen. So the only thing he could kill with the wraith, because I didn't realise that he could advance in charge, so that put me on the back foot a little bit. But when I figured that out, I just, the only thing he could charge with uh, his wraith were my um, guardsmen. He obviously killed them. And then I basically put my knight an inch away from them, and then opened up all of my ter- all of my storm bolters. Uh, and there's a squad underneath this um, next to my tank commander, so I put them onto that terrain piece in my first turn. They opened up at the wraiths, and then also I dropped another unit near where that knight is now um, into them as well, because I thought they've got to go before they start hitting my tank and stuff. So, and then I just um, <coughs> I, I really he only had one left, and I really whiffed in combat with the knight. And um, didn't kill him. Uh, so anyway, he started to then regenerate them, got another one back, but managed to finish him off. And I then dropped another two squads in this left-hand corner here, where his um, scarabs are and warriors. Cleared the warriors off. He redeployed his boys. Um, and then over the you know next few turns, I basically table him um, and just 
get board control and everything. So the Storm Bolt was really did a good job there. Um, and we discussed it at the, get, at the end, and I just said to Nick, I, he actually had pick a choice of sides, and I don't know why he picked the corner he did, because it was that quarters one again that you played on quite a lot. He should have picked my yeah. side, um, because he could have hit his uh, destroyers a lot better, because I could open up freely and shoot them with my knight after the Doomsday Arcs were dead. Um and I think that was a mistake. I think he could have used his scarabs a little bit better to screen me out to stop my drop coming in because he didn't move them from where that rock is. He could have really pushed them out in his... like Because I can't drop until turn two at least. He could have pushed them right out 12 inches because they've got good movement and really screened me out from getting in within double tap range. And I think that's what Dan did really well when we played. So I think it was just a case of not screening very well, picking the wrong side um, and just deployment let him down really. Um but we went over a few things. I helped him out at the end, what he could have done differently. Um, and in that matchup as well, like he used his redeploy relic on the um, combat boys. But I said to him, you should have just hid them and waited for me to come to you and then sort of counter punch me rather than trying to redeploy them. And what he should have done was redeployed the destroyers and took down the knight, basically, or the, or the tank commander and laid on a lot more firepower. So um, we just went over some different stuff. But I played five incredible opponents. I had a really good time. So I finished on three wins, a draw and a loss. Um, I sh you know, that losing that night in that draw match was so bad for me. And again, going second against those flies was very unlucky. So um, I think if I'd have had a different matchup, maybe played the Orcs um, or some of the Demon Horde lists, I'd have had a much better chance just because that's what my army does really well against rather than I really struggle against vehicles. But... I can take away from that, I was, you know, when I was on the back foot, I played well, I didn't give up, um, and, you know, I played my heart out, and that's all that counts. Um, so, guys, I think that is it. So, we're going to be releasing the... Um, uh, the new battle report very soon as soon as it's uploaded uh, so stay tuned for that and in the meantime guys please give this video a big thumbs up it helps YouTube say guys if you like Warhammer you need to go and see Vanguard Tactics subscribe if you haven't uh, share it with your network and also become a Patreon um, it really helps us um essentially you know grow and you know get new armies and get new things we reinvest everything by the way okay we don't put that money in our pockets we reinvest it and that's exactly what we want to keep on doing and growing this channel um so guys thank you so much um we've got oh, the questions that keep coming in sam said um is there any noticeable things you've noticed about your competitive bodybuilding that you've learned that are applied to competitive 40k i think i could do a whole podcast on that just in itself um but i think the 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 only thing is is it's taught me sportsmanship and all the uh, um, when I was younger, I used to be in the England volleyball team and I played for um, England when I was a junior um, and then I used to coach the England juniors when I got older. And one of the things that I learned from my sport days was lose gracefully. You lose a lot and the best thing you can do is shake your opponent's hand if they've been better than you on the day and appreciate it for exactly what it is and still hold your head up high and no matter when the chips are down you keep playing and you play your heart out and you do the best you can and you don't get salty you don't get funny um i had some bad luck and that's just how it goes sometimes so um you just kind of take away from that look even when you get bad luck no matter what happens you play your heart out you be critical you made mistakes learn from those mistakes you would have nobody plays a perfect game not even the best players in the world play perfect games. So, um, yeah. And don't be afraid to make them either. But just learn from them. So, guys, subscribe. And, um, yeah, we will see you guys very soon. Um, if you've got any more questions, we can um, comment and we'll reply to as many as we can. And then also over on our Patreon. So, guys, until next week where myself, Jack and Dan will be in a, doing a review on our team event that we're going to this weekend up in Manchester at Element Games. I think it's called uh, Clash of the Lions, perhaps. I think that's what the, the event is um, Events called I'm Taking uh, the Death Watch. Um, Jack is taking the Necrons and sorry Dan's taking the Necrons and Jack's taking the Tau so we're going to get absolutely smashed I think but we're going to enjoy it and we'll report back on how we got on in some of the horrible horrible lists that we played yeah. and there are some I've disgusting seen, seen lists on Messenger this week and they look absolutely disgusting oh horrible horrible lists anyway guys until next week um, what we're going to do as well um, we'll email you 
the event to the next live as well so you can join the Facebook group or Facebook event so you can get notified and then what I do as well on Patreon I say yeah, look guys we're going live at this time so uh, helps you stay tuned in thank you so much for watching um, hundreds of you watching live and it is such a pleasure so thank you for all your questions um, Sam Hill I took your advice I'm now in the inner circle yes amazing awesome. great job Sam thank you so much a absolutely excellent um, and you'll be hearing from us uh, next week after the weekend I'm moving house on Friday and then I've got to go and play this event so uh, I'll be in touch with you next week Sam to welcome you in um, so guys thanks so much and until next week take care thanks a lot see you later